Okay, macOS Ventura has been out for a little while now, and while there aren't any major changes that are going to be life-changing, there may be a few that will change the game a little bit. And I mean that literally, as there's some introductions to Metal 3 that may be a good advancement for gaming on Mac. Apple's claiming that this Metal 3 will increase performance when it comes to titles that are near AAA. And while the only title officially supported right now is Resident Evil Village, there's supposed to be No Man's Sky later this year, and hopefully more titles beyond that. Given that there's really only one title taking advantage of this right now, I felt that there wouldn't really be a lot to compare this to as one title isn't exactly a fair evaluation for this being a game-changing feature. Hopefully with the addition of No Man's Sky and hopefully other titles, we'll be able to see what kind of improvements we'll get with gaming on macOS devices. And while I don't think that Macs will ever be used strictly for gaming, it's good to know that they're at least considering it or adding features to help it be at least a little bit better. Aside from this, there's changes to Game Center, which indicate to me that Apple is leaning even more into the gaming aspect and including friends on different titles and probably to try and get more people into the Apple Arcade ecosystem. There's also the addition of share play when it comes to games, so you'll be able to FaceTime somebody and join the same game when it comes to using Game Center. While this seems pretty cool having a live connection to the person that you're playing with, I'd imagine if you're playing on a device like a laptop, you're probably going to drain your battery pretty fast. Spotlight now has better capability as you can search through photos and other things on your Mac. This is supposed to give more detailed results so that you can find things a little bit more easily through Spotlight and don't have to do so much searching. They're also adding some Siri-esque functionality as you can start timers and do other shortcut type features through the Spotlight. There's improvements to Safari which bring it more in line with iOS and iPadOS. I think this is something that we'll see as just a trend across also the macOS Ventura update in general as it brings the ecosystem of all the Apple products more in line with each other and makes them more cohesive. I think this is a good thing because making things more cohesive hopefully means that there's some shareability when it comes to UI and different assets. For a long time I feel like either iPad or Mac has kind of gotten the short end of the stick when it comes to development from the software angle. But now you get all of those iOS 16 and iPadOS 16 features when it comes to shared tab groups and different collaboration features when it comes to Safari. The same goes for iMessage where you can now unsend and edit text messages to other people using iMessage. Time to talk about Stage Manager. Something that drew a bit of controversy when it came to the iPad comes to most macOS compatible devices. This is something that I think is gonna shine a little bit better on Macs because generally Mac devices have bigger screens and one of the complaints about Stage Manager is that it takes up a lot of screen and on the iPad, at least for the 11 inch model, you're not really working with a whole lot to begin with. One thing that I really like about Stage Manager on Mac is that it still lets you use the other multitasking features. You can turn Stage Manager on in the control center and it'll start Stage Manager with the apps that you already have open. From there, you can still swipe up for Mission Control if you're looking for a specific app and you're not sure where it is, and you can still swipe over and use spaces. So you can have one space that's all Stage Manager and the other where it's split screen, full screen, or whatever it is that you need to do. I think that this is pretty helpful helpful as it doesn't lock somebody into just stage manager or just using one of these other things. This is one thing I was afraid of as I thought that it was going to lock you in a stage manager and then you would have to go turn it off in order to use spaces again, but thankfully that is not the case. One thing that I do find a little bit challenging in stage manager is bringing files from the desktop and dragging and dropping them into different windows. If you're somebody that uses your desktop as a file manager and then you look to drag and drop those into other spaces, it's going to be a little bit more tricky. By default, stage manager is going to hide everything on the desktop. You can certainly turn this off, but it kind of takes away from the point of Stage Manager, which is to minimize distractions and keep an app in the center while having some off to the side. You can still click on the desktop to see what's there and open files, but I think this is really going to work best for people who don't really utilize the desktop in that fashion. Again, you can use the other forms of multitasking, so I don't really think this is a huge deal as you can just go to another desktop and drag and drop files as you always would. FaceTime gets the addition of Call Handoff, which I think is pretty huge. If somebody's FaceTiming on an iMac or or a Mac laptop that you don't want to carry around the house, you can hand it off to an iPhone, which is undoubtedly more portable. The improvements to cameras on the Mac goes even beyond FaceTime as you can now use your iPhone camera as your webcam. This works for apps other than FaceTime and it's mainly going to be apps that use the Mac webcam. You can use this on Zoom as well as Photo Booth and any other app where you need to use your phone. Sometimes it'll prompt you automatically to use your phone if it's close by, but if not, you can jump into the camera options and select your phone as one of the devices 
devices you'd like to use for a camera. This is going to be pretty huge when it comes to using your Mac for video conferencing. Additionally, I think there's going to be other benefits to this as if you have broken hardware on your Mac, like a microphone or a camera that's not working, then you can use your phone to supplement that as a camera or microphone that's working and vice versa. If you have an iPhone 11 or newer, you'll be getting center stage to your Mac basically as a free upgrade. This works by using the wider lenses on those phones and beating out the Mac webcam for being able to have a center stage type experience. I personally think this is pretty cool and gives a lot of flexibility when it comes to FaceTime calls and cameras on the Mac. Using an iPhone 11 or later on the Mac not only brings center stage, but also gives you the ability to use desk view. Desk view is basically Apple's version of using software to simulate a top-down view of a camera. This also takes advantage of that wider angle lens and actually works pretty well to give the effect of things flat on the desk. This is going to work best for things that are very close to the desk as you start to get a slightly warped appearance depending on the angle of the phone and the item. This feature is going to work best if you have the little Belkin attachment that goes to the back of your laptop, but you don't necessarily need that to try it out. System settings. What used to be system preferences on the Mac now goes more in line with that design language that I was talking about. You now have all these different tiles in the settings app, which goes more in line with iPad and iOS. While I like that this makes it more cohesive when going from device to device, I will admit that it kind of makes things a little bit trickier to find. But overall, it seems like mostly everything is still there. I don't think this is a huge issue as I'm pretty sure it's just going to be something that everybody will get used to over time. I also appreciate the integration with AirPods. Now you can go into that little tile that's made for AirPods and you can change the AirPods settings pretty quickly and easily. From a security standpoint, there's definitely been some improvements as now there's quick delivery for security updates that are supposed to be on automatic. This also brings the addition of lockdown mode, which was recently added to the iPhone. So for those that are victims of cybersecurity attacks, this should be pretty useful in terms of limiting those vulnerabilities. There's the addition of the clock app on the Mac, which is going to let you set alarms and timers directly on the Mac. I'm not sure why this wasn't already there, but it's a good thing to have. I'd assume that for me and probably others as well, this is mainly going to be used for the Pomodoro technique, and you'll be able to do it with an app that's already comes on your Mac. Live text gets an improved as you can now use it for paused frames of a video and it also works for additional languages. You can now lift subjects from their background in any picture or image that you find in Safari or a few other supported apps including photos and it works just as well if not identically to the same feature on iPad or iOS. I actually tested this side by side with my phone and my laptop. I found it really interesting that two different devices could do the same task on the same picture and get the exact same results. And while it makes sense that they're doing the same task with the same data input, I figured that since they were different hardware, maybe they would have slightly different calculations. I'm not really sure what exactly is going on behind the scenes, so maybe I'm interpreting it incorrectly. One thing that I wish you could do is refine the selection because sometimes there's weird mistakes and I don't really know how you would improve them. For example, with this dog, the collar just turns into a hollow point where the picture is just missing. The Apple Weather app comes to Mac and it's about time. I think this is a good thing for having most of the same apps across all the devices. However, I feel the way it's been implemented on the Mac is kind of weird. It doesn't exactly scale like a full desktop app would, as when it's in its windowed version, it shows all the data pretty nicely, and it actually looks like it's taking up all of the available space. As soon as you're using it in full screen, everything stays the exact same size, the background just gets bigger. I'm not sure why this doesn't expand at all to take up the available space, given that it's supposed to be a desktop app. Kind of feels weird that when it scales up, everything just kind of stays crammed in the middle, even though it doesn't need to, but I'd say it's fine just to have it in a windowed version, just to check the weather every now and then, and probably isn't gonna be a huge deal for most people. There's also the addition of some mail features, which should bring it a little bit more in line with Outlook and Gmail, as there's now scheduled send and there's supposed to be an improved search feature throughout mail. Well, that's all I've really got to say about this update. Let me know what you thought about this video with a like or a comment and let me know. I'm really curious. Have you been using macOS Ventura? How long has it been? Or are you planning on upgrading? Until next time.